Let's do it. The Lion fans, the Lion fans are amazing. But a lot of people like they just they love baseball and they want us to win at all costs. Um. Hmm. No, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say yes to that question ever. Hey, Lions TV, what's up? Happy you're here. Just leaving the apartment, heading to the ballpark. I'm gonna answer some of your questions. So I hope I answer them good for you. Let's do it. On a ride with Buck. Let's do it. Woohoo! Oh, wow. Oh, it's fine. Um, it's definitely different than Japan. Japan, they drive on the other side of the road. So driving here is fine because it's the same as you would in the States. The only difference here is turning left at intersections because even if the light is green, you can't turn left unless you have the green arrow. So that, that's the biggest difference between here and the United States is that you have to have the arrow even if the light is green. But other than that, it's good. I knew, first things first, I, I knew the fans would love it just because it would be a good opportunity for them to see how my family lives and how we kind of do things off the baseball field, kind of how we live at home. Because really people only get to see me in a baseball environment and they only get to see my family in a baseball environment. They see them, you know, at the field watching me play. I actually post up on Instagram so they see kind of some stuff like that. But I think seeing this in like in a daily environment of how we just live our normal lives, I thought it'd be pretty interesting to people. And uh, it'd, it'd be a cool experience for us to have, you know, th throughout our lives to be able to look back and a time that we spent here in South Korea doing, doing a show like that, it was cool. And it's been a very big success, like people have, you know, reached out, said they saw us on TV. A lot of people have seen the show. So um, it, it was a lot of fun. So it, it was definitely a good opportunity and I'm really happy that we did it. Yeah, we did. Um, the night that it aired, it was the same day we had our team dinner. Uh, we came back and we don't have cable. So the lady that works at NBC, she actually sent us a link. So we logged in online and we watched it online and uh, it was it was cool. Um, it was a lot more footage than I really remember. And it, like I, I thought they did a great job of just showing all the things that we did with all the footage they had. I thought they made a very good job as far as like, you know, making the recording for us. And uh, it, it was cool just to kind of see us interacting on TV and seeing our kids acting the way they were, being silly. Uh, and it was funny to watch Ashley, to relive Ashley making that dish with the octopus being alive and stuff like that. It was kind of cool to relive that, it was funny. As far as like having your family, uh, we'll take that aspect first. Daegu is a very, family friendly city. We're actually driving by right now. We, we just left the apartment two minutes ago and we're actually driving by where Bradley goes to school. So that's a bonus right there. Our school's super close. Um, but just the amount of like kids cafes and parks and stuff like that that we can go to and take our children to be outside and just be outdoors and playing and interacting with other kids is a bonus. So that's also a, a, a big positive for us. And then as far as the team, the stadium is absolutely beautiful and it's a very friendly place to take your kids um, and the way they're treated by the fans and also respected by the fans, like even though they're there, fans know that they're there, but they don't, you know, hack them all the time. They're very friendly. They bring Bradley treats. They bring Ashley stuff. I've said it numerous times. For me, my family being treated the way they are is the biggest thing for me. And the city and the fans and the stadium, it's just its just a, a, a great place to be. The only thing I knew about Taney, uh, I think last year, or my first year here, there was some like, video of him like in like a Lions uniform and like doing like baseball camps when he was a little like young kid. So that's kind of the only thing I've seen from him as far as his childhood. But I know for me, that was kind of a cool thing to see that just growing up, you know, he was always been a you know, Lions fan and having the jersey and playing and now he gets to live out that dream. Um, and it's just, it, it's a really cool experience because I I experienced that myself in the States, you know, just growing up wearing baseball jerseys and certain players that you looked up to and getting a chance to play with those guys once you get older, it's very surreal. So, I mean, seeing him from a young age in a Lions jersey and playing something like that, it was, a lot, it was, it was, it was cool to see. Um, when I first came, my first year, uh, they send you like the numbers available that they had and uh, all the other numbers were like really big, like in the 60s and 70s and I just, I didn't really want a, a big number like that and usually you don't see pictures with like single digit numbers. 
And I figured it was a new experience for me, gonna you know, be a, a new part of my career. So I figured you know, it'd be a, a time to you know, choose a, a number that I never thought I would have. Um, but I, I, I like it, I, I think it's a cool number. So yeah, there was, there was the only number that was low, like not 60 or something. Um, growing up, my, my number was always 22. That was always my favorite number as far as like sports. But I noticed when I got here that that number has been retired anyways. N -n -n number four was the one I chose. Let's do it. I love singing in general. Like I, I just, I have a lot of fun singing, hobby of mine. I'm not any good at it, but I like to sing. Um, and the chants are just, they're fun sing-along songs. You know, they're upbeat, because I love music. So they're upbeat and they kind of, you know, get your head bobbing and stuff. But honestly, one of the new ones, Sun Jeans, like I, 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 like, I like his, because it's uh, the actual like, if you want to call it pitch of the song, it's a it's a very good voice, and the cheer captain does a very good job of singing it. So I actually like the, 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 that's a very good singing song. It's not so much the dance, but as far as like singing along, I, I actually enjoy that song a lot. Same song in Yeah, it's a fun one. I like that one. I love it. It's, I think it just shows the the very true like passion of the fans that it's not just sometimes like in the states it's, you obviously have your very passionate fans but a lot of times like going to a ball game is more like a social event you know what i mean and i'm sure people come here with their friends to have a good time as well but a lot of people like they just they love baseball and they want us to win at all costs and even for the kb like it's, it's not just the lion fan the lion fans are amazing but even just like other fans from other teams, like you see like the true passion behind like how much they care about, you know, the game. Uh, there was a game earlier this year where we were winning by like six runs in the ninth inning and the other team was just cheering their hearts out and dancing. And like, I think uh, one of the guys hit a home run like the ninth inning or something. And they were still down by like five with two outs and they were singing like they had just taken the lead. So just, the overall passion that they have and the, the genuine love they have for the game and the players and the team, it's, it's very cool to experience that. I'm going to support Bradley in anything he wants to do. Support Bradley, Lily, Ashley, I, I'm, I'm going to support my family in anything they, they want to do. But if he chooses that he wants to play baseball, I think that'd be great. I obviously have an end for that profession, like I can teach him a few things. I love sports. I mean, I, I think that he might develop that love that I have just by being around me and um, trying to get him involved with a lot of, you know, outdoor activity. Uh, but yeah, if he chooses baseball, I I'd love to help him out as, as much as I can. And let him follow his dream. Let's do it. To marry her? Yeah, to marry oh, her. geez. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been able to see guys interact with women. You know what I mean? So I've never seen the way guys talk to women and how they treat them because for me the only thing that matters is that Lily is treated with love and treated with respect and that she's happy. Whoever it would be would have to go over and beyond to make her happy. That's all that matters to me and that she's protected and loved and happy. But uh, you know I, I see a lot of guys I mean I guess man, I don't know that's a tough one. Um, I see Mino talking to his wife and his kids a lot on FaceTime at the field. They're constantly calling like in the clubhouse and he's talking to them and he's very sweet to his children. He talks very nice to his wife. Cuman talks to his kids a lot and his wife on FaceTime. I don't know, I, I, I trust Mino as a person and uh, I see how he interacts with his family. And I'm sure all the other guys are great as well, but for me personally, I've seen him interact with his family the most. So just for the conversation, I, 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 I guess I'd, I'd have to say Mino. And I, again, don't get any ideas, Mino, <laughs> Mino. But like I said, I'll give credit where credit's due. I see him interact with his family. He's very loving to his children, very loving to his wife. And that's the kind of man that I want for Lily anyway, so <laughs> Mino. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an easier one, just because it's just watch him for a couple hours. Um, let's see. I would probably, in that case, I would probably have to choose probably the couple that maybe speaks the most English and has kids around Bradley's age. Um, I think M M Mino's daughter is older than Bradley, right? She's older than Bradley, right? So she's older than Bradley, um, but I know he has, he has more than one kid. Um, 
Goni has a son that's a little younger than Bradley, uh, but I think his wife actually speaks a little English. That, that'd be good. Um, but from, from what I've seen um, and what Ashley's told me, like with all the wives and the kids in the stands, like all the mothers are very loving and they're very good with the children and they're all super sweet. So I think as far as anyone babysitting our, our kids, I, I, I would be comfortable with anyone because all the, all the moms and dads on the team, like I, I, I really, you know, like I, I support the way they, you know, to, to take, interact with their family and take care of their kids. All right, Lions TV, I appreciate you riding along. We were pulled into the yard. I call it baseball park the yard. That's just what I've called it as a, my whole life. Thanks for riding along with Buck. Hope I answered your questions. Hope you liked the answers. And uh, see you next time. Yeah. No, um, I think Sora's personality, I don't think, however long you're away from him, I don't, I don't think that's gonna affect anything. Um, his personality is just very kind. It's very open. It's very just chill. So it's not like if you miss a couple years, it's gonna, he's gonna be a different person. Um, he's the same person I saw as the, the day that I left Japan. Um, like, I, like I said, he's very kind. He, his is a very good, a very dry sense of humor, but he's very funny, which I'm not sure if people see that, but he's a, he's a very funny guy. Um, so it, is, it, it was great to have him back because I knew what kind of guy he was. Sometimes when you get a new guy in here who you don't know, you try to fill him out and kind of see what kind of person they are, but knowing he was coming back, it was nice to know that because I already knew what the team was getting. Um, you're getting a guy who, who works hard. He's, he's just like me. Like I've already seen him talk to a lot of young guys as well. Like he, he likes to help and you know be as beneficial as he can because he's been around a long time as well. He's had success at every level in league. It, it was nice to see him again and know that he's here to, to help the team. And he's obviously proven himself already, even spring training and early in his starts, that he's, he's going to be a big, big asset for us this year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was a... Like a news reporter guy, um, it was me, him, uh, David Huff, and Scott McGuff. Um, we were uh, doing our conditioning during spring training, like when we first got to Okinawa. And there's a movie, Anchorman, with Will Ferrell. And there's a scene when the four guys in the suit are in suits and they're like running off and they all jump at the same time with that, like silly pose. And we like kind of reenacted that scene to kind of like remake that picture and it was, it was pretty funny. Like and the guy, the news reporter like printed it out and gave us all a copy so we all have a copy of it. It's, it's, it's a cool memory to look back on. I remember that play, we were playing the Giants at home and I was on first base, I just bunted for a hit. I was on first base, a guy hit a ball in the gap and I'm going to second base and I see the ball, like I'm running to get to second base and I see the ball land. And as I take off, I know where the ball is coming and I know in my mind I can make it home. Like, I'm not slow, I know I can make it home. And the third base coach is telling me to stop, 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 but I knew in my head that I can make it. So I was like, I'm, I'm going home, period. I'm gonna score. And so I, I just ran right to the stop sign, and I was safe. Um, yeah, I, I was safe. I'm surprised that they don't have the rest of the clip there. But uh, yeah, I, I, I was safe at, on that play, and because there had been a previous play earlier that year when I was rounding home and he tried to stop me at the very last second and like, I had to stop but I actually touched him because I went like that and touched him and then I was out because you can't touch the coach. Um, but I'm not slow and I, I knew, like there was no doubt I, I could make it. So I really didn't care what he was doing. I was going, I was scoring on the hit. And the good thing was I was safe so that was, <laughs> that was the most important part. But uh, no, I, I remember that. That was fun. Uh, what position? Yeah, exactly. Center field. Humbly, I was always good at outfield. That, that's what I played in, in high school. Um, I had a good arm. So that was kind of beneficial for me, is I could throw guys out at home and third and stuff. Uh, but I, I love tracking down five balls. I love running the gap and diving and trying to rob home runs and running into the wall, diving in on the, onto the foul line. So I, I think the outfield is just a lot of fun. Um, I love running at the balls and trying to throw guys out at bases. Faster than? Yeah. A lot of them. <laughs> Honestly, I, 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 I would, I, I would race any of the, any of the guys. Um, Sung Yu, he's faster than me. Ji Chan's obviously faster than me. I haven't really seen the, the, the young rookies run too much. I'm not sure about that. But as far as any opposition player, I'd, I'd, I'd be more than willing to race them. Well, that's not saying much. <laughs> but you know what, I, 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 think, I think Mino is faster than he is almost able to be. If he's to a double play, it doesn't look like he's running that hard. But I just think physically, like he can't 
go all out like G Chan or like or, or a coup or something like that because like he can't afford to blow out or get hurt. You know what I mean? He has to catch and he has to go back down. So I think I don't think he could run as fast as he is capable of just because he he just can't. So, but yeah, no, I I I'd, I'd be willing to race anyone on the team. Tell me to stop, stop, stop. Well, I mean, usually on game days I have a you know specific routine, but throughout the week, depending on what day it is before the start, I have a certain routine. Usually the day, day before I pitch, kind of an easier day. Um, just kind of move the arm around, uh, throw a few of each pitch on like a flat ground, uh, do some sprints, come in, do some shoulder care, and then stretch. And then I'll uh, go into the sauna, do a little meditation, hop in the cold tub, and then do some arm recovery stuff and just. Uh, watch the game on the TV so I can watch the hitters kind of get a plan of how I want to attack them the next day and go home, have dinner, spend time with the wife and kids and fight team the next day. I gotta give like, credit to the guys here. I, I think uh, like pr pretty much everybody works really hard in, in the weight room. Um, when the pitchers are outside doing their running, all, all the guys are running hard, they're doing their sprints hard, they're pushing themselves to get better. Um, they're all trying to work on mechanical stuff like during stretch to you know, make sure the mechanics are right, working on pitches in the bullpen. So all the guys take themselves very seriously. Um, so I think as far as like comparing myself to other guys as a rookie, like I, I like the fact that their work ethic and hunger to get better is there. Um, so it's pretty similar to myself. Um, so I can't really say that I was that much better or anything than anybody else as far as like work ethic and all that kind of stuff. Um, cause I'd have to say just a lot of credit to the guys as far like everybody everybody works hard like even the young guys they don't come in there like timid they're in there working hard trying to get better which is good and the older guys as well no I, I'm, I'm not gonna say yes to that question ever because then that says I'm scared of people and I'm not scared of anyone I'm not saying that there aren't good hitters out there because there are very good hitters they're very dangerous hitters but I'm not gonna shy away from anyone I'm gonna go out there and compete if I get beat then I get beat but I'm not going to shy away from anybody because the best hitters are, 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 are the ones that you want to face because if you're successful against them, you know, that, that, that's more of the competition. Just talk about pitching, um, talk about certain things about the game, uh, think like what's going on, like my opinion of what we should do in the situation, what he did, what would he do. Um, during his game days, I don't really like to talk to him a lot while he's pitching. Um, after he's done, I'll talk to him about his game and talk about like what I saw and like how good he did because usually he does well. He, he throws the ball well every time he goes out there. So, um, but yeah, like, we just talk baseball. You know, um, he, he doesn't speak like fluent English, but he speaks enough like baseball and English to where we can have a conversation about things. So, it's always nice to kind of talk baseball to him. Well, I'm, I'm flattered. I try to, to be a teacher to him and be a, a role model to him. Um, he's so young and he's so good already. It's very easy to get comfortable. Having success at that young of an age, you feel like you're just gonna continue just to have success. But to have success continuous throughout your career, especially for a long time, it's very hard to do. I've had my ups and downs in, in my career, um, and I'm sure uh, uh, Oaken's advice to that as well. He, he's been around. So just have been around for a long time, seeing veteran guys in the big leagues in Japan here. You learn a few things and you see a lot of things that can benefit other guys that I wish I would have known when I was younger. So just seeing his potential of what he could be, I mean, the sky's the limit with him. So again, he speaks a little broken English, so like we can kind of hang out, uh, our personalities match, um, our work ethics match, and from the get-go he's been eager to you know, learn and ask questions and he's not embarrassed to, if he doesn't know something, he's not, doesn't shy away from asking a question to look, you know, I just like talking to him because he's always eager to learn. And that was what I told him and what I've told a lot of people about him is that as long as he keeps the same work ethic and drive to continue to learn, continue to get better, continue to ask questions, he's going to have a very long career. And so I think with him saying that he looks at me as like a teacher, I'm flattered that he feels that way because that's what I want to be to him. I want to be a mentor. I don't have all the answers. I'm not the best pitcher in baseball, but I've been around. I do know some things. And even if my results don't show, like I think my knowledge can kind of speak for itself and my work ethic can speak for itself as well. So I just, I want to share everything I have with him to hopefully benefit him as much as I can. When I first got to the big leagues, um, Cole Hamels, uh, AJ Burnett, those guys like took me under their wing and just kind of helped me out. Uh, Cliff Lee, when he was around, but he was, he was kind of hurt. But uh, AJ Burnett and Cole, um, were definitely mentors. They kind of took me on the wing, like they took care of me. 
uh, they made sure I was doing the right thing on and off the field. Uh, they were telling, you know, they, they would kind of pick on me a little bit, which I liked because it made me feel part of the team. But they would like share wisdom. They would talk to me. And they wouldn't treat me like some rookie who, you know, these guys are Cy Young winners, World Series winners. But they didn't treat me that way. They treat me like part of the team, which, uh, which meant a lot to me. Um, actually, I, I still talk. I still talk to them to this day. Ryan Howard, I still talk to him uh, to this day. So there's a lot of guys that I, I play with that are, you know, big time stars who treated me like part of the team and gave all the advice they could and mentorship to, you know, help me come up the right way. And which, and I very much appreciated it and I knew where their hearts were. So like, I hope the young guys that I talk to, I hope they receive it the same way as I did. Catchers are kind of the only position player that we really get to interact with. Um, just because, you know, like, they're pretty much part of the pitching staff. Um, but since day one, I, again, being the catcher, me being a starting pitcher, we are going to have to have a relationship. Um, so he was very open. He came in right away and opened himself up to me, introduced himself, and kind of get to know me as a person, how I like to do things as far as, a, like, a baseball aspect. Um, but every day, like, we have, you know, inside jokes and meetings. We talk hello. Uh, we try to get our families to hang out off the field. Uh, we have dinner. Uh, the, the two of us just kind of, well, we have a translator go, um, but like, we hang out and do things together. Uh, so like we're friends, we're not just teammates, we're like, we're friends. Um, and I think that spoke to one of the previous questions, like I look at him as a, as a good man. Not as a, like a teammate, but as, as a man, I look at him, I respect him, you know, as a father, as a husband, and then especially as, you know, on the field as a teammate. Uh, he works hard, the guy pushes himself a lot. In my opinion, catchers take the most physical abuse as, as any other position. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure anybody would agree with that. But he does it day in, day out, after long road trips, after long games, in the heat, in the cold. You know, last night he takes foul balls off himself, you know, foul tips, balls in the dirt. So he, the guy gets beat up. But he comes in every day. He does whatever rehab he has to do to get prepared for the game. He works out. He gets himself ready. He studies the pitcher that he's going to face as a hitter. He goes to that meeting, then he gets done, comes to our meeting, and, and studies every single hitter that we're going to face. Then he has to know every pitcher and what their signs are, what kind of pitches they throw, how they like to throw, what's their best pitch. And like, it, there's a lot on his back to do what he does day in and day out and be successful at it. It's, it says a lot. Um, so I, I have the utmost respect for him as a player and as, as a person. I think that's one of those like nature versus nurture type thing. Uh, I feel the nurture part, I feel like my, my parents were into baseball and they liked baseball. So, you know, usually every little boy at some point plays baseball, you know, at some point, whether it's t-ball or little league, they, that's just something you do, you know what I mean? Or you play in the backyard. Uh, but from the, I have pictures when I was a little kid, like, you know, pretend to be a pitcher when I was in the front yard at probably, I don't know, three, four, five years old, however young I was. Um, I think it was probably three or four years old, but I always loved it. And then my dad would coach me in Little League, so that kept going. And then I got good at it, or I was, I was good to play for teams, and like I would play well. So when you're good at something, it's a little more fun. And then your friends play, and then you keep playing. And then you get to high school, and you, it's, it's kind of progresses. But I think uh, as a little kid, I just fell in love with the game because it's just a, it's just a fun game. It's a clean game. It's a lot of sportsmanship, a lot of class uh, to play the game the right way. From where my culture, like it's America's pastime, so it's something that's always been around in you know U.S. and my family. Uh, but baseball's always been a big sport, um, just for me and my family. Like, m m my grandpa was really into it. My mom's dad, Bill, who I actually have on my arm right here, um, he was like huge into baseball. Uh, he always followed me, and he'd like read the newspapers and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's, it's just a great game. It's, it's, I, I know I thought that was kind of scattered. It's a hard question to answer, but I think it's just, like I said, it's just always, it's just always been in me. You know, I think part of it was just, I was just born with it. Personally, I want to win 20 games. Uh, last year, I could have done it. Uh, I had six, 15, 16, 16. Um, so that's only four away, and I had games that just, it just didn't work out, but we had a chance to win. That might have been one of the most defensively supported games I've ever had. Like just had so many plays made, which make the game. You know, just like plays that they're not like crazy plays, but they're like routine, but like kind of routine or a little beyond routine plays 
that if they're not made, that's so many more hits, so many more guys on base, maybe more runs. So just all those plays that I had made in that game made me go seven innings, made me keep them to, uh, to one run. So like defensively, it was very supportive. So I can't say enough about that. Um, but, and the reason I want to win 20 games is because if I win 20 games, that means the team wins 20 games. And with the other starters we have, if I can win 20 and the other guys can win as many as they can, I think that'll put us in a good spot to be in first place at the end of the year, which is the main goal, you know what I mean, to take us to the championship series. Um, yeah, I think I just want to you know, be able to win as many games as I can uh, for the team or at least put us in the opportunity to win. Um, I feel like I have, I'm 0-2 right now, but I feel like I've given my team a chance to win both games, which is, that's all I can do. Um, so hopefully tomorrow I can go out there and do the same thing. Uh, that's that's all I can do is hope to give my team a chance to win every time I take the ball, and then when I'm not pitching, you know, be a good teammate in the dugout and support everybody and keep the energy up uh, in the dugout, keep the energy up in the stands, you know, try to keep the fans into it as much as I can. Um, but just get us back to where we were last year uh, at the end of the year, being right, right there in the race for first place. I think that's everybody's goal. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I mean. I, I, would, I would love to stay here as long as I can, um, but yeah, like, I, like I can't control the contracts. You know, that's all up to the front office. You know, when, if, if they want to give me more than one year, you know what I mean. I would love to get one of those multi-year deals, like Ku or Mino, to you know know that I'm going to be here with, with the Lions family for multiple years. Uh, but if they're only giving me one year, I can't I can't do anything about that. But um, I'll keep trying to you know have good seasons and then at the end of the year maybe they want to give me another one so uh but no i, I definitely feel like home here i feel like family here um coming back will be, will be a lot of fun but you know hopefully that's many many years from now and many many championships from now but uh we'll cross that bridge when we get there no I, I love it i mean I, I love stuff like this because i feel support from a lot of people and so does my family and a lot of people just like yelling at me just tell me you know fighting or they love me or all that's all that kind of thing this I feel the love and support from them, but I can't have individual conversations with all of them. There's just not enough time in the day. Not just Daegu, I mean, multiple cities, I've run into people on the streets and restaurants or whatever that they come up and say hi and their fans are taking pictures. Um, but stuff like this, it's, it allows me to interact with them without being able to interact with them. So like if there's fans out there that have a certain question and they want to ask me, that I might not be able to get the time to meet them one-on-one. -on -one. At least now I might be able to have the chance to answer a question that they had. So I think it's very beneficial um, for them. And it's cool for me just to kind of see what people are thinking about. Like, I mean, what would fans want to ask me if, you know, they could sit next to me and ask me questions? Like, what would they want to know? So hearing these questions to see what's on people's minds, it's interesting and it's, you know, it's cool to me to be able to answer them.